Welcome to the Pecan Tutorials. And this session will deal with how are the locations of genes predicted. First of all, let me have you log in to Pecan. Menu called Genes here. There are several options, and we'll come and explore genes here later. One of the options at the top is called the Host Trained Gene Mark. If you click on Host Trained Gene Mark, um, you see that this grabs onto the bottom here, the slider. You can scroll uh, long back and forth um, horizontally. There are several plots here that I need to explain. There are two programs that are used to predict where the starts and stops of genes are in Pecan and other programs. These are called Glimmer and GeneMark. Um, you can see over here in the genes that there is a Glimmer start predicted for this particular gene at 97, and the GeneMark also predicts it at, at 97. These don't always agree with each other, so we put both of them on, on there. These are the glimmer and the gene mark that are found in Pecan are use internal predictions um, to predict where the genes start and stop. This gene mark here that you see in the host train gene mark actually looks at the host genome and the the genes that are used to make proteins, and it looks at the sequence of those genes um, to find out what sequences are common or, or conserved. And it, it takes those then and uses that to predict where common coding regions may be in your new genome. Now this is very similar to um, looking at codons. Now it doesn't use codons to predict, but let me just make an analogy here. If you go back to the summary page here and you scroll down, you will see that there are, for methionine, there are three possible codons here. Some of the codons are used more rarely than others. Uh, another one for arginine. Um, we have six codons, and you see the AGA is, is a codon that is rarely used. So uh, this is a lot like the analogy for Glimmer and GeneMark. They don't use codons to actually predict reading frames. They use uh, larger um, little sequences than three codons at a time. But it's similar. Um, if you were to look at genes and you had very rare codons, that means there's probably not very many tRNAs for that. And so if you put that in, you're trying to translate very quickly and you get to a rare codon, you go, oh my goodness, <laughs> we have to wait for, for the rare codon or the rare tRNA to come along and service this codon. It slows it down. And so you see um, those um, codons <coughs> are rarely used because it slows everything down and, and genes want to be translated fast. Okay, let's go over and take a look at this. So you would see, want to see, for example, this is a, this trace here is a, a coding capacity. This is showing where it thinks the, the highest coding capacity is for this particular gene. And compare that then to this gene right here. The upticks are start sites. So there's a start site here, there's a start site here. The downticks are stop sites. And so uh, open reading frame then is everything that contains, starts with a, a start site and ends with a stop site. So you see some open reading frames can be very small and others can be very large here that have lots of possible start sites 
ending in a stop sign. Okay, let me exp so this shows where open reading frames are. Let me explain what the three, one, two, three direct sequences are and the three complementary traces are. If we were to start with codon, or if, if we were to start with base number one in the sequence, and we took one, two, three for the first codon, and then for the second codon, we would take four, five, six, for the third codon, seven, eight, nine, etc. And this would be reading frame one. Reading frame two here is shown in this second one, second trace. And this starts with base two. And it starts reading them three at a time. It goes two, three, four. And then the second uh, codon would be four, five, six. And then seven, eight, nine for the third, etc. So this is reading frame two. It starts with the second base and takes them three at a time and looks at the possible codons. And the third base, the third one here then, starts with base number three and goes for the codon, it would take three, four, five. For the second codon, it would take six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11, okay? If we then move over, so we've started with base number one, base number two, base number three. If we go back to base number four, we are actually here in the first reading frame because one, two, three, the second codon starts with base four. So now we're back up reading in this reading frame. So there are three possible reading frames looking at bases three at a time that are possible for the for, forward um, um, transcribed messenger RNA. Okay, so this messenger RNA forward has three possible reading frames. And likewise, messenger RNAs that are transcribed uh, right to left from the DNA make up the reverse or complementary sequences. If we go to the other end of the, the genome and we start reading backwards and we start with the last base and then read it one, two, three, and then the next would be read four, five, six, for example. That's this reading frame right here. If we go to the end and we start reading backwards from the end, and we'd start with base number two from the end and read two, three, four, and then four, and then five, six, seven. That's this reading frame, complementary reading frame. If we go to the end here, we start at base number three from the end and read three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight. That's this reading frame. So these are the reverse reading frames. These are the forward reading frames. There's three of each. Okay, so let's take a look at genes here. Uh, we see there are lots of open reading frames. There are only some of them that have coding capacity or predicted coding capacity. In other words, rare, um, not rare <laughs> codons. And so here's gene number one that's predicted. It has coding capacity. Gene number two, it has coding capacity. Um, we're not considering the other open reading frames here that don't have any coding capacity or have lots of rare codons, for example as an analogy. And so that's how um, genes are predicted. They can be forward coding genes or they can be reverse genes in the reverse. Um, as we look down the genome here, we do find eventually some genes that are predicted in the reverse reading frames. Okay. Uh, that have lots of coding capacity. 
and not as much coding capacity in the forward predicted reading frames. Okay, so overall that's how, how genes are predicted. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned for the next tutorial which will look at how do you add and delete genes. Thank you very much. Goodbye.